So we all just got Amic Trunkart. We all did the fusion. Now we're wondering what kind of teams can we build? And I know a few of you theory crafters have been contemplating pairing Emic with White Dryad Nia. So I tried it. Let's let's talk about this. Welcome, I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are on the test server today. And as I said in the beginning, I tried to build a team using White Dryad Nia and Emic Trunkheart. It's extremely difficult. For me, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, there's some things about it that I looked at it and I like, oh, I can take something away from this. I can make some of this work. Um, but I think, honestly, the best thing we can do is actually just jump into the run and talk about what that means afterwards. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss the next one. All right, just as we jump in here, I'm gonna point out a couple of things. We'll go over the stats and stuff in a little bit later. Now, first off, White Dread Nia will always recharge the person with the lowest HP or the person in the lead if everything's equal, right? If he resets the wrong person in the early going, it's okay. We'll be all right if that happens uh, because later on it should sync up as we start losing HP on Emic. Now, part of this is the shield, kind of keeps everybody to a certain level. Part of it is our defense levels. Once our defense levels get to a certain point, then our shields begin to crack. The big thing is with White Dread Nia, we need to make sure Emic has the lowest HP, like all the time, lowest percentage HP. I think it's percentage that she bases it on. Um, not just total. So it's tricky because he's an HP based champion. So we're sacrificing a lot of damage in order to try to make this work. And then on top of that, everybody else has to heal up over this time. Now I'm bringing in Elva who makes things a little bit trickier because she heals everybody on their turn by 10%. So what ends up happening is this kind of works for a while. And then essentially, Elva doesn't heal up enough, and she ends up getting the reset and heal from White Dryad Nia. That's the biggest problem, and the reason why is she's going to take one turn where Emic is taking two before, you know, everything's reset. And that just has to do with the speed tune, right? She's a speed booster. She almost always, it's very hard to tune it, where she doesn't go last in the comp. That means she's getting an extra turn of healing out. This is obviously problematic. The cool thing about this comp, and the reason why it's working so well right now, is Emic's reducing everybody's three turn cooldowns to two. So Elva, every other turn, is putting up the increased speed and the block debuff. So we don't need an extender or another speed booster. Um, White Dread Nia is, is essentially resetting Emic every single turn. So Emic's A3 unkillable ability is actually happening every other turn as well. So we're staying unkillable for the whole fight, at least as long as Nia continues to heal Emic. This is not a realistic team, to be honest with you guys. First off, if any we have any affinity issues, that's gonna mess us up, right? Anybody weak affinity to the boss, gonna screw it up. So unless we're trying to bring in an all void team, and I don't know if you guys notice, Elva's not void, uh, it's gonna be real tricky. Now I did find a way, kind of found a way to actually do that using like Mithral as a cleanser, Lydia as a speed booster, plus decreased defense and weaken, and then you can bring in somebody like Bellinor or uh, whomever to deal the damage for you. In theory, that should work, but that gets a little tricky as far as making sure you're cleansing every single time, right? You still have the same healing issues as we do with Elva, just Lydia instead. It, so there's some, there's some, you know, fundamental things here that are going to make this a little tough. I've even tried to, you know, manipulate some of the sets to be used. And honestly, the only way I figured that this could work would be making sure that whoever's attacking has 100% crit rate, hits hard. And you put them in lifesteal is the only way I can see to really ensure that everybody has enough HP where they're always going to be able to, you know, where the stun's always going to go to Emic. See right here, look, Elva healed and it still wasn't enough to actually extend past, um, past our guy. So she healed there. So it's possible, right? It looks like we're doing okay right now, but this is going to be very inconsistent and I've definitely failed on this run several times and it just comes down to the healing right if elva doesn't fully heal we don't you know or heal up enough we're not going to be successful even with the regen set on her uh and the mortal set on her 
it's not going to be enough to really get us to the threshold that we need to. Um, and so it can be really, really problematic. Now, the shield from Emic is not an issue. It's more just the healing that we're getting every turn. Um, that's really the big thing in making sure that we're getting that from uh, from White Dryad Nia. But yeah, we lost some killable. Alva goes down. Like that's all it takes is one time where it goes wrong and throws the whole thing off. So not great. Not great is the point. So why am I showing this? I'm showing a losing run. I'm showing a failure run, right? What's the point of that? Well, I mean, it's kind of to show you guys that, well, in theory, some of these teams can be possible in practice is a whole different story. Now, I'm not saying a team with White Dread, Nia and Emic can't work. I actually believe it probably could, but I don't know that that's ever going to be worth it to do for you. So as you can see, we didn't last very long, but we still did really good damage, right? We're being able to have Jintoro use his A3 ability over and over. We're getting Krila's, uh, you know, ally attack ability over and over. And she's have giving us that crit rate buff so we can build everybody a 70% crit rate and the increased attack. So it's actually kind of a nice team, right? In theory, the issue, of course, is just that Nia isn't consistently going to heal up Emic. Now, is this possible? And how would we go about making this possible? I think it is possible. Uh, and the way I would want to go about doing it, if I were to do this, would, I think, have a lot to do with the gear that they're wearing, right? Um, so let's, let's go to Nia here. Where is she? Why dry Nia? Bear with me as we walk through some of this here. So I got her to speed. That was really kind of the big thing here, right? 241. Uh, it keeps us in sync. It's just need to be faster than Emic. The, the speeds are like not crazy, right? Uh, you can't use anybody else in the lead. You have to have Emic in there to make sure that he gets the reset, right? Um, but you know, the speeds are basically, you know, what we have for most of the white whale teams with Lydia, right? We're talking about 260 speed or so for Elva. Uh, I should probably here. Let me, let me go to the team stats here. This is being a mess of a video. All right, here we go. Team stats, right? So Emic, we got 239 speed, Jintoro 204, Elvis 252, Nia's 241, uh, Krila's 213. These are kind of the minimal speeds. Jintoro can actually be considerably lower. Um, I think 196, 198 is kind of the bottom of that. Uh, but you just kind of plug these in the calculator and you know you can see where they are. The big thing was making sure that one, Emic is slower than Nia. The reason why is because I need Emic to go first. I need Nia to reset his skills after he uses them. Um, also, you know, so that's that's part part of it, right? And that's one factor that we need to have happen. Uh, the other part, see, is that right? No, I'm sorry, I want Nia to go, I think I want Nia to go before Emic. I don't think it really matters. It don't really matter. Those two are kind of interchangeable just based off their speeds. It's The key is just getting the recess to happen at the right time every time. Um, and so that's the big thing, right? We need Emic to be able to cool down Nia's ability and Nia to reset Emic's. And so as long as we do that, we can prioritize the skills however we need to, and it should work just fine. And that's a great part with Elva too, right? 252, she's going to go last in the team comp. There's very, it's really hard to avoid doing that. Um, I didn't figure it out. Um, you can have her go faster, obviously. This goes all the way to like 268. It should be able to work, but that's kind of the same concept here. Um, but Elva's great because not only does she cleanse, which we're actually not using, but she puts up block debuff as well as that increased speed. The idea of that is making us affinity friendly in this could be considered affinity friendly except for the fact that affinity clan bosses will not target uh emic with the stun and i think that's actually going to be a major major factor for this so if we really wanted to do this that would be one of the things that i would look at to you know i, I don't know how you do that without it you would like i said you have to use like lydia and mithrala another void champion it just doesn't seem very practical so i didn't build it one of the things that's interesting though is obviously like i had him bare bones right real low hp low defense that's the biggest thing um and even then it still wasn't like this great no masteries didn't want masteries on it. like none of that stuff was going to be crucial to him one of the things i could have done is gone down the defensive tree all the way down here the bulwark that might have been an interesting way to kind of try to keep his hp low but again, it doesn't solve the issue of what do you do with affinity, right? When you're facing red affinity, it's going to target Elva. And even if there is like a Lydia Mithrala kind of combination that makes it worth, I don't see this being a team that's worth building in the least. You still need good stats on the rest of your champions, even though it's unkillable. 
And chances are, if you have those kind of legendaries on your team, you're probably not going to, you know, if you have the option to go all void, you're not hurting for champions, right? So I, I highly doubt that that's going to be something that's going to be significant for people. Um, it, you know, so I, but I didn't build it. Bottom line, I didn't build it. Uh, but in theory, it's definitely possible, right? If you have like a Reho or somebody to give you that lens and block debuff, you just need that speed booster. I grant you Lydia is somebody that you can get out there. Um, so, you know, same with Mithrala. So maybe this is something that people would want to do. And if I think about it, maybe I'll put in the time to do it. But I didn't think that was very feasible. How would I go about doing this, though? With the limitations that we're talking about here, I would want to bring in, I would want to make sure everybody, I think everybody would be in lifesteal gear. I think that's the best thing. So like Elva here, we went with regen and speed, right? And it just wasn't enough. You know, when I watched it, I don't know if that happened on this playthrough, but previous playthroughs, Elva was the one getting the stun. And that was always a bit of an issue because she takes a stun and then all of a sudden she's getting reset by Wydradnia, right? Or she's not healing enough after the AoEs and she's taking the reset from Wydradnia. So I really want to mix that up. I was having issues early on in the runs before, you know, after tweaking it a bit with the stun going to Jintoro because he's got pretty low HP, but he's also got really low defense. And the issue is, of course, that if his shield cracks first, his shield compared to Emix, and Emix is, you know, constantly building his own shield bigger, right? Uh, the issue with Jintoro is that if his shield cracks sooner and he's getting hit sooner, and if he doesn't go below 50% HP, the life drinker mastery, right, on the offensive tree, this is something we rely on a lot, that's not going to be enough to heal him up. And so that becomes an issue of its own. So how do we, you know, how do we do this? I think really the ideal way would be lifesteal on everybody, right? And ha making sure that they're doing damage attacks. If I had somebody like Lydia, you can actually build Lydia for damage. So it's conceivable that could be enough. Um, I'd be more concerned actually with Mithrala. Uh, she's not a big damage dealing champion, uh, in my opinion. She can hit hard and she puts up some poison. So it's not like we couldn't use her, but that would be the concern there is, is she going to be doing enough to keep us, keep us alive and make it work, right? Um, so that's a, that's an issue, right? That's something that we'd want to consider and really, you know, be careful about. The other issue too is obviously like, you know, when the resets happen, that's going to be uh, definitely going to be a thing. Um, you know, we're talking, taking three turn cooldowns, turn two turn cooldowns. So that's going to be an issue as far as timing everything else thing out. Thankfully, we can do all of this in the calculator. So one of the things I just recommend is if you have a minute, go on the website, check it out in the calculator. You can do that um, and you can putz around with this. But yeah, this is tricky. You know, when we're when we're trying to do this, like, you know, I think I've got Nia in a you know, I think what did, what did I have her in is a, a regen set. I think we might have lost a glove on her somewhere in here. Uh, but I've done this with a regen set and it, it it's OK. It works for her. She's not actually the issue in this team. It's the rest of the people that are really kind of the issue. Um, I, yeah, like I said, we didn't even need this. It wasn't she wasn't healing herself. So that's not the issue. The rest it's going to be the rest of the people. So, you know, um, yeah, that's 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 kind of the trick with this team. It's not perfect, doesn't work greatly, um, and I don't see a big future on it, honestly. Like White Dread Nia just doesn't seem like a good pairing with Emic. I, on paper, does on paper seems like a great pairing, but in practicality, I don't see this being something that is worth building. And it's so limited in the champions that you would be able to do. Right? Not only are we talking about you can't have weak affinity champions in your team, so either you're rotating champions or you're building an all void squad. Either way, that can be a little bit tough. Um, secondly, it's not like we're getting to reduce the speeds with a different lead. We still have to have Emic in the lead, so that aura is not really helping us. Thirdly, we're building Emic really badly, right? Like, I don't know if you guys realize, but we have like no gear on him, nothing going on. So he's gonna be low HP, low defense. It means I'm not gonna really be able to use him anywhere else in this game. And that's definitely, you know, that's definitely not something I would look forward to, right? Um, and if you're at the point where you have Lydia, you have Mithrala, don't need Emic, I don't think, uh, for your clan boss team necessarily. So uh, that's not something I would, uh, certainly not in this kind of a team, right? 
So I just can't recommend this team. Uh, I think there is some, you know, I'm not saying there aren't options. I'm not saying there's not possibilities, but I think they're going to be really tricky. And limiting your gear to lifesteal gear, again, is, you know, going to really, I think, hamper your style as far as what you're building, what you're farming in general. Um, and so that's not something I would recommend generally. You don't want leech because Emic still has an attack and that leech can heal him up too much, right? So that's not even a solution to the problem. You can't just bring in Rugnor and say and call it a day and be like, okay, everything's good. I don't think that's going to work for you because if anybody else, if Emic heals up more than anybody else, you're in real, real trouble here. So I'm not to say that that's not a possibility, right? If everybody's HP low enough and they all hit consistently hard enough, that could be a potential solution to make sure everybody heals up to full HP and Emic sometimes does. Uh, and if you can do that consistently, you could be in good shape. Problem is, White Dread Nia doesn't hit very hard. Doesn't hit very hard. So that's definitely a negative for her, right? Um, and not to mention when she heals, she heals everybody else. So that that always can pose some problems. So it can be, yeah, it's gonna, it's it's a little dicey, a little bit dicey to make this team work. So anyway, I know a lot of you guys were thinking about this, were talking about it, were theory crafting with it. I thought I'd show you an attempt that I made, even though it wasn't successful. Just so you guys can actually see it not quite work, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but at least you can see that, like, I tried. I did put together a team here, but getting it to work is a whole nother issue. Now, like I said, you want to substitute Lydia in for Elva. You want to substitute Mithrala in for Jintoro. I do think there's a possibility. I know it works, like, on paper. You can put it in the calculator. It will work. I just don't think it's practical. Um, and I also don't know, obviously you need another void champion, right? For Krila. I don't, I know it can work on paper. I don't know that it's worth building. And I also don't know that it work works, works right. Without using life steal on everybody. I think if you did that, sure. Um, but that's a real limiting factor. So anyway, that's the video. Uh, I don't know if you guys found this helpful at all. I don't know. I don't know. I hope so. At least hopefully you've got your gears turning intellectually. Maybe I don't know. But I built the team. I figured I should show it, right? Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.